Hi, artist Elizabeth Whelan here on Chappaquiddick Island in Massachusetts, and I had hoped for it to be a little bit snowier than it is this winter, but nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and uh, do some drawing tips for drawing snowy scenes. So I do have a worksheet that goes along with this class. If you go to my website, uh, elizabethwhelan.com to the art classes page, you'll see that there's a download. And in fact, for this cl um, class, there are a few downloads because I also have some photographs there of snowy scenes in case you also are not in snow <laughs> and would like to practice doing this stuff. So uh, you'll find um, a number of pages with some examples of, of um, scenes, uh, you know, information, all kinds of stuff. We'll be going over some of that uh, in the class today, but I think you'll find it pretty informative. So you can either watch the information now and go download that later or download it now and Pause the video as you go along. Either way will be just fine. All right, let's get started with snowy scene drawing tips. Okay, so here we are for snowy scenes drawing tips. And I said this at the beginning of the colored pencil drawing tips class, and I'll say it here as well. We often don't have time to do the kinds of drawings that we want to. We want a couple of hours to sit and, you know, really be able to work on something. And sometimes that time just doesn't happen. If you find that this is the case for you, uh, don't let it stop you. You know, go ahead and download the worksheets that are uh, available for this class and the other pictures and such um, that are on my website, elizabethwhelan.com uh, on the art classes page. And, you know, over time, just work on things a little bit at a time. I leave my artwork out, you know, a little drawing project on my drafting table. And, you know, if I get 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, just sort of advance the the thing along. I, I try to do that. Um, sometimes that 20 minutes turns into an hour that I didn't think I had. You know, sometimes all I've got is the 20 minutes, but at least this way art gets done. And I think in our busy lives, if we don't take that kind of approach, then we find that um, there are regrets about not having tried things, not having, not having actually accomplished things. So I'm sure you've heard about, you know, uh, learning foreign languages, you know, just 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. Same thing for drawing, absolutely exactly the same thing. All right, let's get started. So what happens in general is that, you know, when it does snow and you get a beautiful scene like this and you go, wow, I, I just really want to draw it, it's so gorgeous. And then you look at it and you go, but where on earth do I start? So this is what this class is about. It's a little bit about drawing technique, but it's mostly about how to tackle the subject of snow uh, and how do you draw white how do you how do you do it so the first lesson is you zoom in right you, you can't you can't really draw all of that detail that we just looked at although it is possible to draw this scene in its entirety by just sort of boiling it down to its essence but what i prefer to do is rather than trying to figure out a way to you know to push all all the scene maybe of a photo i took you know into one picture I usually like to zoom in. So this is like, you know, if you look at the middle, lower middle of the this picture, you can see uh, the little bit of the stream here. It tells the same story as all of the detail, but there's a lot less going on than if I tried to include, you know, all 50 trees that, that you see in the, in the photo. And this is in part also because you're often taking photographs and using those as your reference. You're often not actually standing out by the beautiful snowy scene, you know, long enough to draw it. So the camera records everything. It sees everything. We have to decide which is the stuff that's really important enough to try to draw. So in this particular case, I, I then simplify the scene even more. Not only have I zoomed in, I'm going to go ahead and squint. And so what I've done here is in Photoshop, I just took out a bunch of detail because if you if you squint at that little picture on the lower uh, left hand side, you can't see all the all the bits and pieces. You, can, you can't see all that detail. You only need just enough to tell the story. What's going on here? Beautiful snowfall covering everything. You know, this is how the trees look. This is how the twigs look that are poking out. We've got a gorgeous reflection in the water. That's the story that tells what's going on. We don't need every little twig, every little stick, every little tree to tell us that story. All right, so one of the secrets to uh, doing anything uh, when it comes to drawing snow is to be able to control your values. So what that means is, you know, if you take a picture with a camera on a beautiful uh, day, for example, it's 
gorgeous clear day like uh, on the lower left you've got blue sky that is then reflected in all of the blue of the snow and when you take a picture with your camera or your phone or whatever you'll get this bluish picture and it can be hard to look at that and know how to interpret that um, and one fast way at least when you're starting is to just turn it into a black and white photograph um, as you get more familiar with this you will be able to literally stand out in that scene and sketch it or sketch from your blue photograph at home and you'll know how to interpret the values but to begin with it can be helpful to make it into a black and white and then if we look at the value scale over here so values are the light and dark a light value at the top a, you know would be white is the lightest value then it kind of goes down all the way to black which is underneath me <laughs> but when we look at a, a snowy picture because of all the reflected light that's bouncing along a lot of the values that we would draw in are at the very top and that means that we have to do a couple of things we have to have a light touch and we have to work on smooth masses so a mass means a kind of a continuous area whether you're blending it by using a drawing stump or your finger or whether you're you know very carefully uh using pencil strokes so that you have a very even tone to the whole thing what you're usually doing is less line work than you might like to use you're actually doing more uh defining edges by having a darker mass next to a lighter mass so this is something that takes a while to develop and i always start my drawings off with a little bit of outline i need to know where everything is right have i got the stuff in the right place my perspective right or my proportions right but then i might erase those lines a little bit and concentrate instead on this idea of one mass up against another because that is really what's happening in real life we really don't have lines that define edges of things um what we have is stuff we can't see it's you know the rolled top of the snow out of our sight it creates what looks like a line because we see the definition uh between that mound of snow and the object behind we see contrast and it makes us think that's a line so it's a bit of a shift to go from working in line work to working in masses and smooth masses on top of that because it can't look all you know all rough and and lines that are far apart if we're trying to give this idea of smooth so here's another situation you might see a out your window a scene that looks like the one on the on the left and i've just turned it into a black and white on the on the right that's all it is you can see once again we're dealing in masses uh in in uh, values that are kind of light or some mid-range and you might think well how do i tackle all of those trees well if you squint and look at those trees they're really just one or two mid-range masses with a few dark lines in them you can draw it just like that there's no problem you've got this lovely kind of pattern of the water coming down which you can simplify you don't have to draw it exactly as you see it and you have some very darks of those buildings and notice how the definition between the snowy roofs and the mid-tone masses that are behind of the trees that is just defined by very carefully making sure you've got your perspective right and here's the secret with drawing snow drawing nothing there <laughs> zero um, really drawing snow is very simple in that you just leave your your paper white but what i i find is that people want to put a line they want to put a dark line around everything and that kind of ruins the snowy feel so if you have to put a little bit of a light line there just to indicate where things start you can use your eraser to sort of erase most of that line just so you can kind of see where the edge is bring your mid value mass up to that and then leave the roof white boom it's snow <laughs> it's actually um an easy way to approach things so here's where things start to get difficult right those scenes were complicated enough but um but this is this is where things get difficult so these are ptarmigans and they're uh, birds i particularly love they they um are not white all year long they just go to this white camouflage uh for the winter so one of the things i want to point out here is, is that shadows are filled with reflected light what that means is if you're working in graphite in pencil shadows are not dark um they uh you know when you go to um uh, along with this particular class if you go to my website elizabethwhelan.com there is a handout you can download that has some exercises for you to try 
when you print those out on your printer, they'll print out rather dark. And so trying to emulate what you see on the printout, you'll kind of be working in darker shades. But if you think back to what you're really talking about here, these shadows are actually mid-range to light values, aren't they? <laughs> They're actually not all that dark. They're not down to the black. And so it's really kind of important to think about that as you're actually drawing. In this particular case, what you're looking at is one area, one mass in relation to the mass that's beside it. So if we take that ptarmigan that's right in front of us, who's standing up, we can see on his back that the, the lit mass of his back that isn't in shadow is lighter than the mass of the shadow behind him. And then he's got, you know, he's got shadows over him from the trees and you come around to his stomach and that is still lighter than the mass behind him. And so, and in fact, if you really look carefully, you can see that there's some reflected light that bounced up from the snow and there's a little bit of an kind of a, an even lighter rim round his, round his chest, uh, you know, which actually, if you can capture that when you're doing your drawing, it helps define the form. So let's now look at the uh, ptarmigan that's uh, sitting far over on the right. And when, once again, we have a slightly different situation. His back, of course, is lighter, a lighter mass. In other words, it's white. It's actually the paper color, lighter than what's behind him in terms of their shadows. Um, but now on his tummy, that is darker. He's closer to the ground. The light cannot bounce back and forth um, as much. And so it's darker than the mass that's behind him. You might also wonder, well, what do I do about the snow that's behind the white ptarmigan? That is a really good question. So there are a couple of ways you can approach it. And one is um, not to feel like you have to fill everything in, but you might decide that very lightly behind the areas where you do have white, that you have an extremely, like maybe a 10% or 20% value that you put right there. Kind of pretend that the snow has a little bit of darkness to it there just so you can show off the white of the paper, which is basically the white of the brightest area, which is the ptarmigan's back, or there are a couple of areas uh, in, in the reflected snow. So there's a lot of decision-making that has to go on when you see a scene like this. And one of the reasons I suggest not drawing a, a scene this complicated to start off with is because of all those decisions. I mean, if you were to draw one ptarmigan and what was going on about it, you would be doing really well. Um, and as artists, we get to make these decisions. You know, we don't have to draw what's complicated. We can draw what's easy. You could go, hey, I just want to draw that big fat ptarmigan that's up on the right hand side, up on the left hand side, or the one down on the on the lower lower right. That's fine. You don't have to feel that just because you took a picture of something, that everything that's in that photo has to go in your drawing. But I did want to bring uh, the reason I'm showing this particular very complicated ptarmigan uh, picture is because. I want you to start getting kind of an eye for color, for color reflected in snow. Because if you think about it, it's all this color is actually bouncing around. We, we see it as white, but there are actually some purple tones to some of those shadows. Uh, the ptarmigans themselves are actually, when the light bounces back on them, there's some sort of golden tones. Can you sort of see those golden tones underneath the, um, you know, like where, where where they are, the bottom of them is closer to the snow. Um, also, in some of the deeper shadow pockets, uh, where you've got the one um, ptarmigan taking a nap, um, and also down at the lower uh, left-hand side of this picture, there's almost some sort of greenish, kind of a greenish tinge. It's looking for those colors and adding those colors to your paintings or your colored pencil drawings of these types of subjects that will really start to make it feel like snow. Because even though we look at it and go, okay, light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. What we interpret as color in our in our brains, we actually see all of these different shades. Pulling that stuff in will make it seem actually more realistic, even if we exaggerate it a bit. Um, the longer you look at it, the more I'm sure you're seeing purpley colors or pinkish colors. And the same goes actually for uh, drawing and painting uh, sand. Um, if you, it, the same sort of thing happens, you know, golden reflections, purple reflections, blue reflections, uh, turquoise reflection, reflections. Once you start to to look for color within the shadows, it's kind of interesting. All right, let's move on. So much easier to draw 
is a situation where you can take advantage of contrast. In other words, have dark against the snow or dark against your white subject matter, whatever it happens to be. So, you know, drawing a, a dark stream with, with white snow around it, drawing a white ptarmigan, you know, with, with rocks and such behind it. You get to do a little bit of shading here and there in the snow or in the in the ptarmigan, but most of the work of defining the form, defining the shape, is done by the dark objects around it, um, is done by that shadow that's cast over that rock. It makes your life a lot easier. So here's another situation where it's there's no need to draw the snow itself. So this is Iceland. This is at a museum up there where they have recreated some of the, the turf homes. And when it snows, you've got, uh, you got a lot of snow everywhere. And what you don't have is edges to things. So if you squint and look at this, you can't see edges. I mean, you can't, uh, sorry, you can't see lines, but you can see where one mass, a dark mass is next to white, is next to a light mass, et cetera, et cetera, with some texture and such in there, because of course you've got, you've got snow here and there on the, the, the bricks and that kind of thing. So in a situation like this, you might map the whole thing out very lightly with very light lines so you can get your proportions right and that kind of thing. And then erase most of the lines and draw only the stuff under the snow. So to get that kind of feeling of the snow sort of coming around the edge, if you think of how snow works when it lands on things, how it sort of builds up and then it kind of like creates this round edge that sort of, you know, comes down over the top of things and try to as you're drawing the objects under the snow look for places where that sort of curved over feeling comes into being um, it will give that feeling of snow and then basically what you're doing is you're leaving the rest of your paper blank you're not putting anything down there um, so actually it's a really fast way to draw is to draw snowy scenes i wanted to point out um, also that you can reinterpret the scene so that you can use the snow as a design element. It's perfectly okay, as I said, to draw some light lines to, to get started. Now, this is a pen and ink drawing by Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson, one of my favorite, favorite illustrators, did this incredible uh, 50 um, illustration, uh, illustrated book uh, with 50 illustrations in um, of Mary, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And I, I, I mean, I'm almost speechless. This was this, these were done in the late 70s, um, 19, the late 1970s, and are just they're superb. And one of the ways reasons they're superb is uh, is in his treatment of snow. So if you looked at the original pencil drawings for these, and a lot of them are are online. If you if you search for Bernie Wrightson Frankenstein, you'll see a lot of his uh, initial pencils as well as what um, came next with the with the uh, the inking, and then of course he erased the pencil work. Um, he's really used the the light and dark, the contrast, um, very much like those of you who know when I talk about notan, the Japanese term meaning the balance of light and dark. I mean, he's a master of this. Uh, and then of course he's working not in pencil, but in um, pen and ink to kind of give this feeling. But he's also using, he, he didn't fill in every divot every bit, every twig, every little thing that might have been in this scene. Of course, he's making a lot of this up from his head using reference, but but creating this scene himself. Um, and leaving that area white like that was fabulous. And now we're gonna see one of my all time favorite of his illustrations. I, I think this is, I think this is my favorite ever drawing in snow by anyone. Um, not only is the perspective stunning um, and his control of values in pen and ink is incredible I mean look he's going from like a 20% there with that gravestone that's close to us you know uh, down to the down to a hundred percent with her dress um, this is incredible design but what's really stunning is the way that by showing the objects under the snow and not putting edges around saying here's the edge of the snow it doesn't have to because with overlapping objects we get that sense of depth and we get that sense of an edge so this is a little technique a little tip um, when you are drawing something and particularly if you're making something something up out of your head or if you're choosing a scene over objects that overlap slightly 
help give depth to a scene and they help create edges so that you don't have to draw a line around everything. Everything doesn't need a line around it. Um, and that way you get this sense. Look at these overlapping gravestone uh, markers that are up close to us and, and how we get a sense of one following the other without any outlining going on. So this is really masterful. And you know, the, the next time you see a statuary with snow on it or a fence with snow on it or whatever it happens to be, have a think about this illustration you know, and how you might go about doing something similar. Okay, so um, you know, this has been kind of a, a quick go through. I'm gonna show you in a minute an example of, of what I did with that snowy scene, but I want to just go back over these tips because they're really important. First, when you see something that you want to draw, zoom on in, zoom in. That really is the best way to get started. Uh, and then simplify the scene even more by squinting. <laughs> you know, I love to do that, but it's so true. Whether you're working in color, whether you're working, you know, whatever you're drawing, you want to you want to take out extraneous information. Just leave enough. And you can always add more in, right? You can always add more if you think you need it. But it's really good to get down to the, what's the basic design? You know, does this feel like a balanced composition? And the way you get there is by eliminating things. So if you're looking at your phone, if you're looking at an image on your screen, or if you're looking at it in real life, doesn't matter. You can do the same thing. So control your values and work on smooth masses. So when you go and actually try some of the uh, exercises that are in the in the package, what I did was I printed, I created a little a little uh, package of exercises for you. I've included uh, Bernie Wrightson's, whoops, other way up, Bernie Wrightson's illustrations on the front, just for your reference. And then there are a number of things that you can draw. Um, there's an image of the of the snowy scene that we saw at the beginning. There is, uh, and I did a very light outline to help you just sort of get started so you can work on your shading and your masses. There's a there's a ptarmigan. Uh, likewise, I did a, a really light outline so you can, you don't have to worry about your proportions. You can just um, go ahead and start drawing. So when I say about controlling your pencil, controlling the masses, one of the things I'm talking about is holding the pencil further from the back, I mean, further from the tip, so not like the way we draw, which is like this. I don't know if you can, I'm gonna hold up a piece of paper behind this so you can see. Don't hold your pencil like this, but you're gonna hold it from near the, nearer the back and at a really low angle. And what some of the people, I did a live class of this lot not too long ago, and some people actually found that holding, holding the pencil from above, let's see if I can, there we go. Holding the pencil from above like this, allowed them to, to get that low angle and to be super, super light. So I'm holding my, holding my uh, almost as if it was like a baton that I was going to conduct with, but now I'm going to very lightly, and this is how you get those 10 and 20%, you know, by just, and I also make these little kind of circular motions as I'm drawing. Um, and that, what that does is it stops me from sawing back and forth and making bunches of lines that have uh, too much white space. So when you're trying for this idea of smooth masses, pencil control, value control, that is what you're after. Um, once again, uh, remember that the shadows are filled with reflected light, so draw them on the light side rather than the dark side if we want to make it look like snow. Um, and if you even, and that means even if you've got a building casting a light, uh, a tree casting a light, keep all of your shadows on the light side. One thing that you'll notice when you're out on a snowy scene in particular is that a shadow is darker near the point of origin. So say it's a tree near the base of the tree where the least amount of light is jumping around, um, the shadow will be darker. And then as it gets further away and more of the light from the atmosphere is uh, kind of diluting the shadow, the shadow will seem lighter, it'll seem fuzzier as it gets further away. So Watching the actual characteristics of shadows on snow will really uh, will help make your drawing look much more realistic. Uh, take advantage of contrast in your composition. Anytime you can use a dark thing behind something or to sh underneath the snow to show that it's snowy, it'll help so much. People will understand that. Uh, there's no need to draw the snow itself. Do everything you can not to put pencil marks in the snow, unless you really, really have to show something. Um, 
and you know so you're trying to what basically you're trying to draw the objects under the snow and how they look when the snow is sort of uh you know falling around the edge of it and then reinterpret the scene as you need to take things out so that you can use the snow as a design element uh it's white space right it's less to draw so work with a good tip on your pencil an electric sh um, pencil sharpener is a is really useful i totally recommend them uh, when you're trying to use a light touch uh, the you know if you've got a rounded kind of blunt pencil point it's super difficult not to get too much graphite going down hold the pencil away from the tip and use the eraser use the eraser as much as you need to you know i found when i was uh, doing the drawing i had to constantly pick out you know by pick out i mean um get back to white where all of the areas that were supposed to be white were because you know i'm good at rubbing my hand through or maybe my line work you know where i set up originally where everything was going to go wasn't that exact i also use either a piece of paper or a piece of tracing paper under my hand because i'm a good one for you know for smearing my pencil all over the place i have a tendency to uh since i draw with my right hand i work from from the left to the right and then i usually go back over it again to you know add the darks and such in um this is just because of me being messy you may be an awful lot messy um but when you're doing something where you want to keep the paper clean um it's really really helpful just to keep a piece of scrap paper under your hand uh, it'll help so much all right so now i'm going to show you what i did so this was my very rough start uh, this is what the start of my drawings look like in situations like this i've got a lot of pencil down there but i'm trying to figure out what are the angles you know how how does this actually work you know which trees do i want to include which branches are important enough that i think they ought to go in here and then i had a devil of a time with the shape of the uh of the stream i i couldn't it took me a while to get that so what I did was I used my pencil for something else. I used it to check my the angles. I wanted to see, well, where is the bottom of the stream in relation to the bottom of the, the lowest tree? And then I, so I would hold my pencil up, look at that angle, you know, looking at my reference uh, photo, look at my angle. And then without changing how my hand is held, I moved my pencil back over to my paper and double checked to see whether whether what I had drawn was the right angle. Likewise, I did that with the trees. I, I was like, okay, is that tree at the at the angle it's supposed to be? What's it supposed to be? And then without changing the angle, I, I moved my pencil back over to my paper and double checked. So I do this all the time to measure. So as I was having trouble with that stream, I decided just to sort of take the general overall shape, kind of Christmas tree sort of shape of the of the stream. Look at the outside dimensions on both sides. Look at the bottom dimensions on both sides figure out where the bottom and the top was supposed to be yeah just by judging it in relation to other branches and other like the tree bottoms and that kind of thing then i mapped out the what they call the envelope which is just sort of the large the big large simple shape and then i broke that shape down into the little divots and once again i checked the, where the divots were against for example the bottoms of trees so i kind of got them in the, in the right place now i didn't overthink this this is a sketch a small drawing for fun i wanted it reasonably accurate because i wanted the look of a small stream and i wanted the look of the trees but you know is anyone going to stand out there with my sketch and look at this scene and the snow on exactly this day and point out where i did right or wrong no and they're not going to do that with yours either you know this is what i mean about reinterpreting you can take things in and out you could take half those trees out you could have you know three trees not four or five you could have a smaller stream you could you know etc cetera, etc cetera. now i decided i liked that lumpy bit that was in the middle with the snow on and i thought that was sort of important so as i went to the final drawing this is what i ended up with so this took me oh gosh i know a couple of hours to uh to work on you know drawing is not fast just like colored pencil isn't fast drawing isn't fast i'm working here on uh fabriano uh, artistico paper which i love to draw and i just love the way it takes the darks but i didn't do the darks until the very end i actually did most of this with a mechanical pencil very very light trying to really control my tone my tones my light tones like for the tree where was the dark side of the tree you know how how was i gonna how was i gonna get this sort of glassy look to the stream and then i did one pass at the end where i 
made it things darker that I thought needed to be dark. And I left it at that. So this is, you know, to me, a pleasant little drawing, right? It's not, it's not uh, something that's going to go in the Louvre, <laughs> but it was fun. And it was a good exercise in this idea of drawing snow. I felt that the end result looked very snowy. I got the feeling of the snow actually sitting on top of the trees, not by drawing a line around where it was lumpy, but by having the dark mass of the tree behind just a simple white area that creates the edge that makes it look like snow. So I hope that as you see snowy scenes, even if you're just driving around, you don't have time to actually draw them. You'll start looking for this and planning in your head, how would you go about basically drawing nothing <laughs> in order to make it look like snow by accurately drawing the stuff that's behind or underneath the snow? And that will give the illusion of snow. I hope that makes sense. Okay, if you want to get in touch with me <coughs> for any reason whatsoever, uh, talk about art, ask about any of the stuff you've seen here. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook. You can email me directly. And if you go to my website, elizabethwhelan.com, to the art classes page, you'll see the downloads for this class and also for all of the other classes that are up on the YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, anytime you need to get those reference materials, um, you'll find not only the, the worksheets, but you'll also find a PDF of all of the slides you've just seen of this of this video. So you'll have this information to keep and use into the future. All right. I hope you have a lot of fun uh, drawing snowy scenes, uh, painting them if you want to as well, and taking advantage of whatever few moments you have during your day to just advance your artistic practice. <laughs> all right. Bye for now.